Greg Mortensen, author of Three Cups of Tea, is now facing legal trouble. His book inspired millions and raised millions for charity. But a 60 Minutes investigation cast doubts on his story and about where the money went. Now a donor and a Mortensen reader filed a lawsuit that could soon spread nationwide. And CBS News correspondent Seth Doan has the story. Three Cups of Tea describes the life-changing events that inspired author Greg Mortensen to build schools in remote regions of Pakistan and Afghanistan. The book sold around 4 million copies and compelled readers to donate nearly $60 million to his charity, Central Asia Institute. Mortensen was seen as a selfless humanitarian until 60 Minutes aired its story last month. And we found there are serious questions about how millions of dollars have been spent, whether Mortensen is personally benefiting, and whether some of the most dramatic and inspiring stories in his books are even true. Among those who felt moved and later duped by Mortensen's message were Michelle Reinhart and Jean Price. Both are lawmakers in Montana where Mortensen lives and are now seeking a class action lawsuit. I mean, I think there are people from all over the world that have given to... Mr. Mortensen and CAI, and I think have probably given money to him and purchased his books all on the, the uh, representation that this was all true. So I think it's going to be a, a lot of people involved. In statements, Mortensen stands by his story and emphasizes that the schools his charity built are benefiting. As for the two plaintiffs in Montana, they're not asking for a refund but for the money to go into a trust so it can go where it was originally intended. Mortensen is no longer writing his own story. He's being investigated by Montana's attorney general, and a small college in St. Louis even rescinded its offer to have him speak at commencement and receive an honorary degree. Seth Doan, CBS News, New York. And we're joined now by Newsweek and Daily Beast reporter Mike Giglio, who broke the news of the lawsuit just a few days ago. Good morning. Great to have you with us. Thanks for having me. So this lawsuit, right now it's two women, but do you think it grows and expands into a much larger class action? I mean, if they do get class action status, it's open to anybody who bought the book in any state and also anyone who donated to the charity. If it becomes class action, what kind of monetary stakes are we talking about? I mean, it could be just refunds on the book. Um, in the case of James Fry, the, the, the readers got vouchers. Mm. Um, but in this case, it also involves donations to the charity. So we know from the CBS report that there were $14 million raised by a charity in 2009 alone. So yeah. the stakes could be pretty high. So, and of course, what uh, Seth Doan's piece mentioned that they'd recover some damages as well and potentially put them towards the charity that he says that he works with. Right. They're not asking for any money back to themselves. They're asking that to go to a trust that then administer the funds to, to the intended purpose of building schools. The fact that the two plaintiffs are state legislators in Mortensen's home state, does that make any difference to how big this could become? I think really it just shows how deep this is, this is reaching in the aftermath of the 60 Minutes report. Um, you know, his home state is where he's really a local hero, and I think people there are maybe feeling the most betrayed right now. Betrayed by him. Right. As this grows and expands into something larger, um, what could be consequences for other authors? Do you anticipate a lawsuit like this makes people think, stop and think before they publish a book? I think so. I mean, I think the James Fry suit made people stop and think, but because it is, you know, end up being not a very serious settlement um, in that case, maybe um, that kind of skipped by. But this, this seems to be a lot more high stakes. It seems to be high stakes. It also brings up the question, however, of how much as readers, how much onus do we take into our hands? How much responsibility do we take when we assume something is true and honest and then make a decision based off of it? I mean, I think people are right to be skeptical of anything that comes out that seems like it might be too good to be true. And if you look back, I think a lot of this did. A lot of this did seem too good to be true. Um, in terms of these two women, what do you think they're ultimately after, the two plaintiffs? You know, it's hard to say. They didn't return my calls for comment. Um, the lawyer declined to make them available. Um, it could just be that they're genuinely hurt. Even, even the lawyer himself told me that he was one of the readers. Um, so it seemed to be a sense of justice they were seeking. Or maybe they, they want um, their name out there. It's hard to say. The lawyer himself told you he was one of the readers. Did he anticipate including himself in something in the future? Um, I'm not sure what he anticipates. It's a small firm right now that this right. lawyer runs that's, that's taking on Mortensen. Um, 
Do you anticipate it could change hands if this lawsuit does grow in size? Right. He, they specialize in personal injury law. I don't, I don't know how far this will go, but I think this shows people that, you know, it's definitely open to different suits like this you know, and from you, anywhere. You bring up the point about what happened in the case of James Fry and the fact that people got vouchers for books. So if individuals, eventually, if this were to grow, if individuals participated in the class action lawsuit, is that the kind of thing you think could be an outcome? Well, they're asking. They, I don't think they want vouchers. They want the money to go to the schools. Um, in Afghanistan and Pakistan, so it's hard to see how this would work. And I don't know if you can get vouchers back for your donations either, so I think this is a bit of a different beast. A different beast. Thanks so much for being with us, Thanks. Mike Giglio. We appreciate it.